Hi kids, we've missed you a lot and we get to now send you videos to teach you different subjects. So guess what? I get to be first and you know it's the perfect kind of day. It's this gorgeous cloudy day, the wind's blowing. Isn't it pretty? We're going to learn first about area and perimeter. So I'm going to start you off early with a little bit of review. So where is the area? It's inside. Where's the perimeter? It's around the outside. So we're going to start off with a few examples. And I want you to tell me whether or not you think it's area or perimeter. Okay, so when I told you we had to pick different ways to say area or perimeter, where am I right now? Am I in the area or am I in the perimeter? That's right, I'm in the area because I'm in the middle. Now, the fence around the outside. So we have area in the middle and perimeter on the outside. We're going to go to another site so you can try again. Okay, now we're in the goat pen. The goats, as you can see, little Ellie's right here. <laughs> Are the goats in the area or the perimeter? I'll give you a chance to think about it. That's right, the goats are in the area. So now, as we come this way, come on goatsies. Goatsies, goatsies. Okay, so the goats have their area where they can go so they can get feed and grass and everything. But if you look around the outside, they have a fence that is their perimeter. Otherwise, we wouldn't know if our goats were safe. So the area is where they stay and the perimeter is what keeps them safe. Okay? Shut the gate behind you, Regis. Mm -hmm. Here's another one for you. So I'm standing next to the shop. Am I touching the area or the perimeter? Okay, think about it. That's right, this is the perimeter because it goes around the outside of the shop. Inside the shop would be the area. You guys are doing great. We're gonna move a little bit harder now, so get ready. Okay, remember when we talked about the book Miss Agnes? Miss Agnes's, they had different places to keep food. This is a root cellar. We talked about that in the book. It's where you keep things to keep them cold and keep them safe longer. My favorite day, it just started raining, guys. <laughs> okay, the root cellar, which is very old, was built in 1947. That's old. I want, as an extra bonus point, I want you to figure out how long ago that was and text me the answer on Class Dojo. Now, the root cellar is nine feet wide and 12 feet long. What is the area of the root cellar? I'm gonna pause the video to give you time to think. Okay, how many of you got 108 square feet as the area of the root cellar? If you did, give yourself a pat on the back. Here, I'll give you one now, but you could just have to imagine it. Now I want you to figure out, okay, if the area is 108, what is the perimeter? Pause the video now to think about it. What is the perimeter and how do we do it? Let's review real quick. What do I do first to find out the perimeter? I add the sides and double it. So nine and 12. Pause the video and figure out what the perimeter of the, sh the root okay, cellar well, guess is. Guess what? It's starting to rain harder, so we might do some more of the work inside. The You should have gotten 42 feet as the perimeter of the root cellar. Okay, we're going to go see one more building outside before it gets raining too hard, and you can figure out the area and perimeter of that building. Let's go. Okay, so we also talked about where in um, Miss Agnes they had to go to use an outhouse. I am standing in an old outhouse. Obviously this outhouse is not in use anymore, or I wouldn't be standing in the middle of it, I'd be falling through it. But what I want you to figure out is if this outhouse has a length of four feet and it's a square, what is the area? Pause the video so you can figure it out. Okay, so we know that a square, all sides are equal. So if it's four on this side, it has to be four on all sides. So how do we get the area? We multiply the length and the width. Four times four is 16. 
And we know that if it's area, it's square feet. So we have 16 square feet for the area of the lovely outhouse. Now, what is the perimeter? Pause the video so you can figure it out. Okay, we know that for perimeter, we have to add it. But with the square, we have a little trick, don't we? We know that we can multiply four, four times for each side. So the perimeter of our outhouse is also 16 feet. Nice job, guys. Let's go to another location. Okay, you guys have heard about me talk about Jacob. This is Jacob. He's going to give you a problem this time. So this bridge is 20 feet and three, three feet wide. What is the area? Now you need to figure out the perimeter. This is the hard one. We haven't done big ones like this, but I know you can do it. So give it a try. Pause the video. You figure it out. 46 is what you should have gotten. So 46 feet is the perimeter of the bridge. Nice job. Let's go to another location. Okay, now we're in another location. We're over in the chicken coop. And Ralph here, he lives in here. And this is where he Some of the hens are laying their eggs. <laughs> Turns out Ralph is actually a girl. So we kept his name the same just for the sake of it. But Ralph lives in a coop that is eight feet wide by nine feet long. How big is the area and perimeter of Ralph's coop? Go ahead and pause the video and figure it out. You should have guessed that the area was 72 square feet and the perimeter was 34 feet. I know you guys are doing well because we learned all this in class. So say goodbye to Ralph. Say goodbye to Jacob. We're going to move on to some harder ones and we're going to go to a different location. Okay, this is my niece Taylor. She's going to give you the next problem. This swing is six inches wide and 20 inches tall. Can you figure out the area of the swing? After you've had time to figure it out, the area of the swing is 120 inches. Can you find out the perimeter of the swing? The of the swing is 52 inches. Okay, what? so it started raining too hard outside, so we had to come inside for the hard one. I'm going to give you one more. This is a hard one. You guys remember, these are irregular polygons. First step for doing irregular polygons is... That's right. We have to divide the irregular polygon in half. We can either divide it in half vertically or horizontally. It's your choice. Pause the video so you can draw this shape with the measurements around it. Okay, let's walk through this step by step. So I decided I'm going to divide the shape vertically. So I'm gonna draw my line and divide my shape vertically. Well, kind of vertically. Now, how am I going to figure out the area of this first rectangle? I have to find the length and the width for this rectangle only. So when I look at my shape, I can see that 10 centimeters goes the entire length of this rectangle and four centimeters goes the width. Now, I can't use the eight centimeters because that'll give me the whole polygon. So what is the area if I have a length and a width of four and 10? Go ahead. Okay, four times 10 is 40. So I'm gonna write 40 in the middle of my rectangle. Now I'm gonna figure out the smaller square. Well, not quite a square, still a rectangle. I need the length and the width of this square. So I look and I'll say four will be my width and five is going to be my length. So four times five is 20, you're right. So I have 20 for my length or my area of this rectangle. Once again, I couldn't use the eight because it goes the whole width of the polygon. Now I'm going to add 40 and 20 together to give me 60. That's right. So the area equals 60 centimeters squared. Now pause the video for a minute and figure out the perimeter. Okay, so we're going to add up the perimeter by pieces and use friendly numbers to make it easier. So we have four, five, four, five, whoop, ran out of room, eight, and 10. So which friendly numbers can I use? I know that five and five 
will give me 10. 4 and 4 will give me 8. Now I have some friendly numbers to work with. I know 8 and 8 is 16, plus 10 is 26, plus 10 more is 36. So the perimeter equals 36 centimeters. Nice job, guys. One more thing and then I will say goodbye. Okay, so I'm gonna give you a challenge. What I want you to do is I want you to draw your own tiny house. You wanna design all the areas that you know a house needs. And when you're done, I want your parents to take a picture of it and email it to your teacher on Class Dojo. So, giving you an example, if I draw a tiny house, Poppy, it's okay, she's fine. If I draw a tiny house, there's my rectangle I'm gonna start with. But remember, it doesn't have to be a rectangle. It can be a polygon too, or it can be an irregular polygon. I would design my house by drawing in areas. So I would draw in a bedroom, and I'd put the length and the width of my bedroom in the area in the middle. I'd also need a bathroom. I'd need a kitchen, a living room. What am I forgetting? Try and think of the other parts of a house that you think are necessary for a good house. Remember, make it creative, make it your own. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed your project today and I hope you take the time to enjoy all your time with your family. Here's my family and we're saying goodbye until next time. Hope you all are doing well. Bye. Bye. Bye.